This edition of the Riddler Report is brought to you by Freaking.com For a Palestinian to attack an Israeli for being in Palestine is an initiation of force. That happened on supposedly fairly large scales before independence back in the 40s, but some of the Israeli settlers initiated force against bystanders by blowing up the King David Hotel. When independence came, the Israeli government, you could say, became guilty of initiating force against its taxpayers by taking their money from them and using it for its purposes, but the Arab states surrounding Israel, which invaded Israel, were even more guilty of initiating force against their citizens to fund the invasion of Israel, popular or not. And any attacks by the Arab governments that killed bystanders would be an initiation of force against those bystanders. Any attacks by the Israeli government or militias against bystanders or which killed bystanders by accident would be considered an, initi an initiation of force against these individual bystanders. So as you can guess, I'm thinking that a simple solution for the problems in the Middle East, especially surrounding Israel, would be a reduction in the initiation of force. In other words, each government of each country in the region or authority cuts or eliminates its taxation of its own people as a first step to drawing down the conflict. Every Israeli who stole a piece of property that an Arab paid for committed an act of aggression. Every Israeli who owns a piece of property that they bought free and clear didn't commit an act of aggression just by being in Israel. That's not an act of aggression. Arabs did not own the entire property, you know, the entire state. Each individual Arab owned whatever property he purchased or which was given to him by someone who purchased it. Again, free and clear. And I'm not counting purchases that were forced. So every individual has some right to be in that area. Even I do. I have a right to go to Israel or Palestine and buy anything from anyone that I want and live there without signing any papers. So do you. And they have the same right to do that in the United States, as long as they're not initiating harmful force or fraud against somebody. If that principle were to, by some miracle, come into vogue in uh, that part of the Middle East, that would be another step towards resolving the problem. You have to apply these principles without deferring to your prejudices about Palestinians and Israelis, if you want to be pro-freedom. But I will say, I tend to slightly sympathize with the Israelis more than I sympathize with the Palestinian Authority. And just slightly more uh, because of the fact that at least they do seem to have a, a long tradition of a representative government. It's not a very good government, but it does allow a lot of political diversity. Uh, they don't have a death penalty. Maybe that view on my part is a little bit unfair because the Palestinians have been uh, sufficiently uh, messed with uh, since 1967 that it's hard, it's very difficult for any stable political infrastructure to arise. So chaos reigns, and in chaos, the worst rise to the top, and it's very difficult to, to even see or hear the normal people because the crazies are in charge. The other thing with the Israelis that tends to uh, lean me very slightly in their direction is that what the Israelis did in, in uh, Palestine in the 1940s is not that different uh, from what the Free Staters have been doing in New Hampshire, of whom I am one. It's an immigration process aimed at creating a state that will look out for the interests of us. Uh, in our case, freedom-minded people. In the Israeli case, Jewish people. Obviously, the difference is that Free Staters are not really supposed to initiate force to get what they want, and the Israelis do not have that compunction. 
Though again, it's easier to make the case that the Israeli government initiates force against its own people than it is to make the case that they initiate force against West Bank residents. I think that would be true. I mean, unless they're taxing West Bank Palestinians and actually getting the money, I, I don't know what the status is there. Again, that's one of the problems with the coverage of these issues. Well, these issues are never even brought up. No one even talks about taxation in Israel or their heavy gun control, heavier than it should be. As usual, everyone wants to just put you on this one-dimensional uh, political uh, escalator, and you're either on the Israeli side or the, or the Palestinian side. It, it, it's going to be more complicated than that if you have a simple, defendable political philosophy. But one thing that I think, one good thing that came out of the creation of the state of Israel, at least for a while, it seems to be going away now, but uh, the idea of having a stateless people does not work very well. The stateless libertarians have done quite badly. Uh, stateless uh, uh, Romani, a.k.a. gypsies, have been heavily persecuted over the years. <laughs> really, really awesome, colorful people, if you've ever met any. And much less itinerant than you, probably. Uh, Kurds, look how bad Kurd Kurds have done over the last 100 or 200 years. Armenians, before they gained a state... Uh, once they gained a state, uh, thing the, the game changed for Israelis. It, it was still difficult, but I think the level of respect for Jews went up around the world when uh, you saw what they uh, were able to do, at least militarily, not, not so much economically, with uh, a state of their own. Might doesn't make right, but it sometimes makes fright. One issue, though, that probably should lean me more in favor of the Palestinians, at least on this one issue, guys, I think, don't they get less aid from the U.S. than the United States? So am I not forced to pay more money to the Israeli government than I am to the Palestinians? I don't know if this is the case or not. If it is, then that would tend to make me, that would tend to push me more in the pro-Palestinian direction. Never forget, the average Palestinian is not necessarily guilty for what Palestinian militias and governments do, and the average Israeli is not necessarily guilty for what its force-initiating government does. My body! My property! You've seen the dramatic liberty arrests in Keene, New Hampshire. Now see 111 reasons why you should move there and reinforce these gutsy activists. Keene's advantages are compelling. For details, visit freaking.com